The enthronement of the new Archbishop of Canterbury was a story with two sides. Behind one set of railings just outside the city's cathedral, people gathered in the hope of catching a glimpse of some of the famous faces expected at the service. I'm here really in support of the Archbishop. Um, I've, I was born in Faversham, so I'm not far away, and I've been coming to the cathedral with my parents from the age of um, a baby, really. Well, we wanted to come to see the Archbishop, and we took the day off school and work just to wander down and see if we can catch a glimpse of him and Prince Charles, maybe even the Prime Minister, who knows. But across from them, around 100 protesters met, hoping to confront Prime Minister David Cameron over government spending cuts. We're here to tell Cameron and the Archbishop and all the dignitaries that will be here today that we don't like the attacks on the public sector services, on education, on health services and all the austerity measures which they're using to try and relieve a crisis which was not our fault and we shouldn't be paying for. Uh, it's not just the NHS, it's public service cuts, um, it's uh, education, uh, education is, is vital, uh, it, it is the NHS, uh, because it's universal, health, life should be something that we all have a right to. The service gets underway at three o'clock, just the other side of that arch. The Archbishop processes from his house to the west door, where he knocks three times and asks to be let in. He'll then process down the aisle, and there'll be Bible readings and prayers until he's eventually placed into the Archbishop's chair, marking him as the Archbishop of Canterbury. Stepping inside the cathedral's precincts, there was little to disturb the peace as the 2,000 guests made their way inside. Then came the VIPs, representatives from churches across the globe, and finally the Prince of Wales. At three o'clock, the service got underway.